Tchau. Hey everybody, <laughs> we are the Amerami Junkies, hey, yo. and Demon Engine has this shining light on him as if he's been blessed. No, it's spooky, it's, it's spooky Tober, so you know, he wants to be spooky, he's going to tell us some ghost stories today. <laughs> But uh, first, let's uh, let's say hello. We should start with this enlightened gentleman over here. Yo, it's your boy, the demon, the asshole, the the cuddly person that everybody loves to hate. <laughs> queen, you go. We'll hey, y'all! Queen. It's your girl, Queen Nick. Y'all already know what it is. Um, I'm a I'm a flash my camera for like two seconds, but I'm out here looking at hot mess. So, no judgments, please. We don't judge you. Photography. Okay. Hey. Oh, gosh. You, really you don't look like, like a hot Like one second. I literally meant what the fuck I said. <laughs> Say cheese. Um, oh, you're looking great. Um, like my phone thinks I'm okay. Like that. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's your girl. I uh, hope y'all are doing. I hope y'all have been taking care of yourselves and taking care of each other. To my right, something like that. Hey, y'all! It's the equal love in the building. Having technical difficulties, but we're getting there. It's all good, and of course, I'm salty live two one five. We are the Ameri Junkies, and today we have a guest. Yay! This man, uh, this man is the creator of Black, uh, of Black Moon, BD, the <laughs> BD of Concept Moon, music creator, uh, cur- currently out with the big hit of uh, Black Locust Moon and Prime, and you have a new project coming out after Image. Yes. How are, how are you doing today? You know, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. You know, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh oh. Are you back? <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, that happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, thanks for having me on. I'm feeling really good. Like, so we got the afternoon Kickstarter out right now. Uh, you know, we got, you know, Black Lotus Dragon, uh, Prime, all these things. So we got a lot. We got a lot to offer people. So I'm just here to uh, kind of well, it, it, you guys and spread word. It's an absolute pleasure. We're going to be talking to you today, finding out the the, the beginnings of it all and, and where it's going. But first, I'm going to get to the Geek Report because there is some news happening. Uh, first and foremost, apparently a 70s show sequel called That 90s Show is going to be ordered by Netflix. Do and I feel old or what? Everything it makes you just me, said made me violent angry. Violent, it makes yeah. me feel really old and... <laughs> I'm also kind of confused because I remember when they tried this before with that 80s show, and it lasted all of four episodes. So, I mean, uh, but the 90s was popping though. Like, yeah, but it was the 90s. I think what they're trying to do is probably grab the millennial audience because we are the biggest nostalgics ever. Yeah, I, I'm just not sure how well this one's going to go because. We have a group of white kids and one random minority in Wisconsin. I get it. So uh, where are they going to be this time? <laughs> I, hope, I hope it's in a city. That will make it more interesting. Of course. Uh, I mean, we'll, 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 we'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, HBO Max has released uh, a poster for Young Justice. Season four, Young Justice Phantoms, which is going to be starting in a few weeks on HBO Max. Uh, I'm a big Young Justice fan. I don't know about everybody else. 
Did you enjoy the third season as much as the first two seasons? I enjoyed the third season, especially for some of its twists, because they did a they did they did a lot of misdirection in the third season. Right. And so I and I appreciated it. So you know. Um Jamie uh Jamie Clinton, uh actress, uh she's gonna be playing Pinhead in a brand new uh Hellraiser film that it's gonna be played closer to the comic series, and from what I understand, it looks like it's going to be a Hulu original. So I'm uh, I am excited for that, despite not liking horror, but I really enjoy um, the actress, so I think it's going to be pretty good. I mean, uh, what are, what other things you did? Since eight, yeah, I'm about to say oh. mm-hmm. the, the beautifully ill-fated since eight. Yeah. Oh, let's not get into that. it because I could talk about Sense Eight this whole entire show. Save <laughs> it for, for another episode. <laughs> uh, we can do an episode on Netflix, ill fated shows, and spend Ooh. half of it on Sense Eight. <laughs> Don't you get me started? <laughs> Plowing ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about plowing. We're just getting into fall now. Bruh. <laughs> that was uh, not the same part. I'm more demon time. Let <laughs> me mean, clock out this bit. <laughs> and that's why he has demon on the beginning of his name. Because look at him. Look at his thoughts. Totally. Like, look at him. <laughs> um, shame. 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 <laughs> ha- Halloween stores have started a the Karen wig. <laughs> Yo, I seen that and I was and, dying and I was here for it, but you know how people want to be I, all sensitive when it's when it's them that's the, the butt of the joke, you know. Cause before they all like, oh it's just a joke. Oh, it's just a costume. <laughs> I think I'm perfectly fine with it because let's be honest, for years there have been wigs of dreadlocks with Rastafarian hats stitched to them. How many yeah. people mm-hmm. dress up as geishas every Every um, Halloween. I'm gonna buy one. I'm gonna buy one and go to the nearest store and talk to their manager. I'm fine. That's my plan. I'm definitely Look. gonna <laughs> video where it didn't happen. Just like video. speak to your manager, sir. Oh, yeah. Video you where it didn't happen. Real energy. You have to take Corey <laughs> with you as you know oh, the customer that you were harassing and then telling on. Yeah, and then you gotta, and then you gotta like have a whole. You what you gotta do is you gotta have a whole uh, tantrum in the middle of the store, pretend to pass out, <laughs> and dare ah, a motherfucker yes. to say something. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be like the one lady that was just stop recording me, stop recording me. Yes, the one exactly. on the floor. Yep. Yes. And straight into a police hall. <laughs> yep. I can see it now. <laughs> um, in, uh, in, in Marvel news, um, Catherine Hahn, who played Agatha Harkness in WandaVision, mm-hmm. apparently she's getting her own spinoff series. Yeah. That'll be interesting. That yeah, will be interesting. Yeah, that'll be cool. Agatha did the show. I, I thought, mean, I feel like she has thought, a lot of stuff to unpack as a character as well. Mm hmm. Indeed. Someone was like, oh, she's going to, like, what was it? I can't remember exactly, but she's going to, like, have a school and the show's going to, like, basically talk about the school or something. Okay. I guess it's, like, a known school in the Marvel Universe, but I'm not sure. We'll see, because it's, yeah. it, it's uh, the Marvel Universe is unfolding a lot now. Uh, another quick tidbit of Marvel news uh, Baltrock, who's played by George St. Pierre, who's been seen in Falcon and the Winter Soldier and in mm-hmm. Captain America, the Winter Soldier, he said he has no problem going back to the UFC and serving hands. He just needs someone to challenge him while he's training. But- and George St. Pierre is a very accomplished UFC fighter. Okay. And I, if who I like, wants I like someone was a person. Yeah. <laughs> like this. 
this Frenchman wants all the smoke. So no, just, Rampage say ask. the same thing after he did 18 and then got knocked out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> First off, let's, all right. Rampage is not even a technical fighter. He's a brawl. Let, 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 let's keep it real. Yeah, he's a straight up striker and he got knocked yeah. out. <laughs> my, like, like that, there's a little bit more calculation to to St. Pierre's movement. If I remember correctly, a foot hit his face and then he went to sleep. So, hey, first off, when it comes to UFC, we all know anything can happen. Any, anything. We watch one. We watch one, <laughs> we, had, we watch one of the game's biggest shit talkers break his leg and still talk trash after taking the L. <laughs> So yeah, no, I just wouldn't talk no shit if I was a UFC fighter. I would just go ahead and knock people out. Go <laughs> I just wonder who asked him about him returning. Like that, like uh, I don't think anyone actually said anything. I feel like he was sitting somewhere in his home. And you know how people think about things like years later as a comeback? Like I feel like well, that was him thinking of an old <laughs> Actually no actually no said okay. George St. Pierre still trains on a regular as if he has a fight coming up. That's cool and all, but so who asked him? That's because he bored. <laughs> Nobody asked him. Well, you guys, he was, he was, smoke. Was, he was thinking so. about something that somebody said back in 2015. He just wants smoke. He just had to respond. I mean, it do sound like something like when when he was in the shower or whatever. He was thinking back on that so, time where somebody said something smart or whatever, but he didn't say nothing to defend himself. And so, no. you know, <laughs> I'm just like, saying. Oh shit! I can still knock that dude out. Yeah, I can do that. Um, it's like when I'm gonna fuck y'all up. Man. It's like when Ken Shamrock retired and came back to WWE. <laughs> All of um, them. It's never, it's never the same. But uh, next, next, next move. Um, Game of Thrones star uh, Natalie Natalie Manuel. She stands in solidarity with other dark skin act- actresses by refusing to take the role of Tiana in the live action adaptation of Princess and the Frog. They smart, just really smart. do not want to hire anybody like, yo. And if they do, it's always Viola Davis, Whoopi Goldberg, <laughs> or motherfucking, um, what's her name? Gabrielle Sidibe. All right, first up, leave Whoopi <laughs> alone. That's my EGOT. Listen, I ain't got no beef with Whoopi, okay? I love me some Whoopi, but what I'm saying <laughs> is right. there are I more dark-skinned actresses than her, well, uh, I'm sorry, Scratch Gabby, Gabby, Lupita. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like literally, like come on, y'all. But what there about way more besides actresses that are talented? Yvonne, yes. Ijori, or yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm. But there's a that, spectrum but. of our complexion, right? There's a spectrum right. of the brown complexion, whatever. And it's like you don't have to go to the extreme, light skin or racially ambiguous and you don't have to go to the very end of the beautiful spectrum of the darkest skin actress tiana is a brown skin portrayed cartoon we have plenty of brown skin actresses where you don't have to you don't even have to say we need a dark skin actress you can say we need a brown skin actress like i don't understand they don't Uh, really like black people come on now i feel like brown skin women like in Hollywood are just invisible. Like we have to be either really dark and then take on all of the crap that, you know, people have to say, or we have to be, have to be really light to get roles. But where is the brown, where's my complexion? I feel like they're all working at Tyler Perry Studios. I ain't saying, I ain't gonna say nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Like I'm just over it. Putting on bad wigs and and doing and oh doing pieces God. where they're Can being either physically or spiritually Perry. abused. Tyler Perry Dang. said. Tyler Perry said he's done with talking about the wigs. He, oh. he's well, over. buy better ones and or hire right. good hair people. How about that? He <laughs> he does the wigs himself. Atlanta. Keep that same energy that he does with his wig on their wigs. Right, he I ain't never himself. seen the look, look, look as bad. After you've seen um, his Alex Cross wig, it was like, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> I'm just like, no. Nah. As Jada <laughs> like, says, that part. 
Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, Alex I'm like, Cross. Uh, I'm like, bro, your studio's in Atlanta. All them hairstyles in Atlanta, you can't bro, nobody about come it. up there. Talk about it. Yeah. Bruh. You know, my people from North Carolina, I mean, that's a phone call. I can ask somebody to drive okay. up to Atlanta. Okay. Uh, other interesting news this week. Um, Sora has been revealed as the last character in Smash Brothers. We all saw this coming. Yes, yes I knew weeks ago. I knew weeks ago I've known that this Sora forever. was confirmed. It, it, there was, there, I mean, it's it's one of those dumb moments. I'm, I'm torn. I'm happy that Sora is going to be in the game because that's what I'm going to make. But I'm also sad. Where's the love for Waluigi? No. <laughs> no. Stop. Yes. Stop trying to make Waluigi happen. It's not happening. It he doesn't needs even, to. He doesn't even have the, like... It don't matter, fam. <laughs> There's fucking, what, Peach, multiple forms of Mario, Luigi, Wario's in the fucking game. Jesus, we can't get fucking Waluigi? No, no, we for the no because we have all We're good. of those people who are like Waluigi. We don't need him. We're good. If if you and this is the final, I'm assuming like when they said final DLC, I mean that's for the whole ultimate game, right? Like there's no yeah, this more is it. DLC. Yeah. No more. Mm -hmm. So Waluigi has to wait for another Smash game next and decade. Still <laughs> well, I need to put respect on my man's name. No, I'm no, good. He can be in something else. Maybe he can be like a random character in um, Nickelodeon's All Stars. Steve Chill. from Minecraft is in there. Yo, yo, yo. I know this guy who made oh. Steve, and he be winning. Hey, hey, he's playing in Smash Adelphia this week, this weekend at Too Many Games, with the intention to main Steve. It's a ballsy move. I respect it. <laughs> uh, another great move. I respect. Um, another cast announcement for the AMC series interview with the vampire. Um, they're, they've got Bailey Bass as Claudia. Yes. Yo, these it's a lot of melanin in this vampire vampire series, and I'm here for it. They might as well just call it Vampire in Brooklyn. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Hey, that was a good movie. I don't know what you talking it's about. A, that was a good movie. It's it's a good bad movie. No, good, bad it was movie. a great movie, okay? <laughs> you fuck there. You be fuck there. <laughs> it's, a good, it's, a, it's a good bad Best movie. Best movie ever. I don't care what you say, dog. All right. Yeah, I think it's great Any, that you got all of these uh, color people of color in uh, these, these sci-fi movies now, finally. Like, I'm I'm, been, I'm uh, just curious to see how this story goes. Yeah, me too. Like, uh, I, even, like I ain't reflex. I probably won't watch. It. I I'm give, I'll, I'll give. I'm a clap for all the people of color getting jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, they're definitely like tapping into pause, the black. Pause, 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 pause. Full stop. Why? Why don't you watch it? Yeah. yeah. Why? Uh, I'll probably watch it like two years too late. Like I'm, I'm like I'm that guy. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm watching season one when everybody's in like season six. So, you know, that's probably my, my thing. I don't really watch a lot when it's coming out. I like to sit down and be able to kind of digest it whenever I get a chance. Plus, I'm not really big into um, these last couple of, like vampire stories that's been coming out. I like my vampires a little bit more raw than some of these shows portray them as. You know what I'm saying? So. That's been my biggest issue with the, the vampire job mm. recently. Right, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Which I, I got a project coming that I think y'all gonna love, but that's a couple of years away. All right, we'll get into it. Uh, last two more things. The Nintendo Switch OLED is out, it's available. Uh, it's lighter, it's a better LED screen. Nintendo Switch people, I mean, if you got the money, go ahead and upgrade. From what I heard, it's sold out. I mean, well, that sounds like Nintendo, so, you know. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> well, typical, you better go ahead and go on them reseller sites. That's typical thing, Nintendo. We'll uh, last, uh, last interesting story. The Marvel Avengers game, which was pretty much on its way to crash and burn, 
has now received a second chance by being added into the Xbox Game Pass. And Mm -hmm. with Xbox Game Pass currently at 4 million subscribers, uh, it has been downloaded right now at least 2.3 million times around. So that was like the most repetitive game I ever played in my life. <laughs> my whole thing is, I said it. I said it when it, I said it when it first was announced. I'll wait for it on Game Pass. I, I, I called it right then and there. I was just like, "This looks cool," but mm, I don't know about that. Uh, ca- yeah, it's a I kind of. Fell off of it when I realized just like why am I why am I playing as the Hulk? He didn't body by like <laughs> right everything. I don't I just, this don't make sense. No, no. <laughs> like it was just a big cash grab. Games like exactly. that really cat games like that kind of irritate me. It's just like it had it had all the potential. They could have made that like Spider Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that would have been crazy. Or at least, uh, or at least, gave it a difficulty curve like the old Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't understand why why those Marvel like why the games are like that. Like when a game comes out that has a lot of other very very popular media, I tend not to touch it because I just feel like it's just a cash grab for the most part. Listen, I so far, I so far it's okay. I understand the thing that got me was everyone's like, How come they don't look like the MCU? You know how much that would have cost? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Why do you need that anyway? Like, why do you need you just watched it and you see it everywhere? Why don't we because give you something different in a game so that you can enjoy this in a different way? Because man, people like people like the familiarity. I guess even if it was like designed with those actors' faces and bodies, people would still complain. The same people that complained about them not looking like it would have complained about them looking like it. I concur. Fact. Damn if you do. <laughs> damn if you don't. Yeah. But that is the word. Ain't that, ain't that how it always is, though? <laughs> yep. Yes, it is. You ain't never lie. But no, but we can. Wait, what you got? Can we can we rewind back to Sora and his skills? Like I don't know how to describe it because I'm a Smash dude. Uh. Like I watch a lot of Smash, but I don't play it myself. And but like he's one of the ones who can like like if he gets knocked down, right? Like he can automatically fly back up on the, on his own, right? Did you they guys all, like they the all kind of have that? They but all have Soros that ability. Is different. Soros is different. Like, isn't like his upswing or something is different? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. Kingdom Hearts. Listen, y'all, listeners. Okay, Sora has a special upswing thing that is OP compared to all the other people on Smash. Okay. Whatever. Anyway. Is it really? Have you seen some of them fucking Fire Emblem characters? Right. <laughs> 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 the up smash be trying to dislocate your goddamn jaw. That's all. <laughs> I actually played Smash Ultimate for the first time yesterday. I had a live, like, teach me how to play, like, stream on Twitch. And the person who was teaching me, he was like, all right, let's learn with Cloud versus Sephiroth. And I played oh, the Sephiroth. Okay. Just Is that like, one of those I, things where they teach you how to play and they beat the hell out of you? Yes. Is it, it, Dodge! It, Basically, Dodge! It's like, oh, so I mean, that's like the first Cloud. lesson. Dodge. Yeah, exactly. You like Cloud so much. You just wanted to see Sephiroth go down. And that's why you chose to teach me <laughs> with these characters. Now, I've only oh, actually yeah. played Smash a few times because I don't have a, I don't have a Switch. I have a, a PlayStation. So we, we, we'll do the Brawl Hollow. You know, I get on there with my sons and we'll play the Brawl Hollow and they just beat the hell out of me on there. So, um, well, uh, well now I, you I got Nickelodeon uh, All Stars and that joint looks looks great. Yeah. <laughs> be like yeah, using all the suction power. It, with a, it looked like it looks like Smash Clone with uh, Nickelodeon nostalgia just thrown I mean, all in it. That's honestly what it looks like. I mean, attack. 
the SpongeBob like ring himself out on people and like I just imagine Patrick like sticking to people. Like I don't understand how SpongeBob and Patrick are gonna like battle on this game. Listen, I'm about to say Smash Brothers has duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Rob the robot. I'm like I'm like I'm like <laughs> We I guess they'll can. make it work. Oh, SpongeBob will attack with his spatula. Oh, <laughs> but that is uh, that's our geek report. We're gonna be right back uh, with Concept Moon. Okay. And we're back. And we're back. Talking with BD of Concept Moon. All right. So, how long? Uh, how did you get? How did you? How did you? How did you get? Uh, tell us the origin story. How did it all start? You know, so it all started. The idea for Concept Moon came to me back in probably 2015. I was uh, I was stationed in Korea at the time, and. Uh, <laughs> you ever have you ever be at work and somebody pissed you off and you're like, you know what? <laughs> this ain't gonna happen again. <laughs> this <is> not. <laughs> so that's kind of how it was. I was sitting there and I had a moment and it's like a light bulb moment. I you know, and uh and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna start writing my own, I'm gonna start writing my own book. Um that was this project I'm working on called Instruments of Jahan. I worked on that for two years and then uh and then in 2017 we me and Corey officially Kind of started the company up and we did that thing like that and then uh we put out frontline soldiers number one um and then we met keith through blanime podcast uh in 2019 and then keith came in with us and then we've been rocking like that ever since um so it was just an idea born out of you know a frustration with the direction i was going in my career and my life at the time and really just wanted to kind of get into a space where i was cultivating my passions a little bit more Instead of you know working for the man or working for, just working for anybody really, <laughs> so you know that that was kind of the, where it all came from. It seemed like it all happened really fast. I mean, I was thinking like you would go back further than 2015, but it's it's crazy when you put like your work, like dedication into your ideas and your thoughts, like how quickly everything kind of manifests. Yes, yes. I'm a big believer in, in, in cultivation and manifestation as well. So like when I it's like it was like like I said, it was just kinda like a moment, like a single moment I can go right back to it. I just got chewed out by my uh <laughs> by my uh, first sergeant for some shit that wasn't had nothing to do with me and I was just like, you know what? It's not it. And, yep. <laughs> and, and from that point, everything everybody I needed to meet, I just started meeting them. I was just kind of meeting people randomly in, in different groups and uh, through other people, just networking. Everything fell into place so quickly, and uh, and then here we are, and it's like, nice. oh wow, nice. So, okay. So, which so, which project would you consider like your 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 big your baby that you've been working on and just watching it grow and flourish would it be black locust moon or prime um well, you know black lotus dragon uh that's an amazing project oh, right. that, uh, yeah, it's all good. um that keith did um and uh i would say that's probably to this day that's probably our best selling project you know i mean that, that's the one most people are familiar with um the one that i would say that's my baby is a project that's kind of it's probably after it to be honest the one that's out just coming out now that they do on the kickstarter right now um i have kind of been molding that character for a while um and so when when i when i started working with robert jeffrey who the acclaimed you know this is the, so this critically acclaimed writer like you know these guys work with dc he's already done like all these small these writing awards and stuff for doing indie comics and I, I came to him, I was like, Robert, man, I got this idea. All I got is this character. I got these like five, six characters. I kind of got a loose idea what I want to do. Like, which one, and, um, but I'm like, I think you can take it, you know, across the goalpost. And uh, that was 
hard, very hard, because I'm used to writing my own projects. I'm used to edit. I'm, I'm used to being completely involved in the whole process. It's like it was like taking your baby and putting it up for adoption, almost like let me let me give this to somebody else and let them handle it. Um, so I know that they're better equipped. So it was. It's been a, a difficult process. I would say that one's probably the one that's like the most. Wow. Now, I, now I'm not gonna lie. I've been, I was, I've been reading. I've been reading uh, after image, and yeah. I kind of had to wrestle Brahim for it because he was like, "No, I'm looking at it." I was like, "I want to see too." <laughs> uh, no, because like uh, one, the character, like the, the main character himself. I mean, I love the color choices. It literally does just hop right off at uh, right off the cover. Yeah, it almost makes me think about those uh, like metallic, uh, like those metallic covers or those three D covers, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. It, it's crazy you mentioned that. Cause those are things like when we, were, when we were talking about what we wanted the cover to look like, what we wanted the character to look like. We literally named like those things. And it's kind of like it's like I need him to look. I need him to look a certain kind of way because it's not a whole lot of prominent black male teenage well not a lot of black teenage heroes in general mm-hmm. not that you know and so it was like i really wanted to look a certain kind of way i wanted to feel a kind of way i wanted to be able to fit in with the miles morales and the statics yes and i and look and, mm-hmm. and look and look like he belongs feels like he belongs you know what i'm saying so that was a big deal that's i love that you say that because when i look at the character that's exactly like what i think that he fits in with kind of that preconceived image that we, and I see like the black community, when you say like a black teen superhero, what I would immediately be able to identify him as, like I can see that, I can see him fitting in with that, but he still also stands apart on his own, but I would be interested to see how is he different or who is this guy? Who is this, you know, teen? So yeah, that was really cool that you said that. But I, you know, I love the creative process so much. You know, when we when we sit and we build these worlds, like we've been, you know, crafting, we've been in this like so we've been in this concept moon universe for about you know for about six years. So you know, so it's like finally starting to see it come to light. Now it's it's really it's really cool because when you read After Image, if you've read any of our other comics, you'll you, you might catch a few little Easter eggs or references to other books. And so this is really kind of the first one that's like a full, like it's like a full, full in our universe, and you can really, really feel the immersion if you've been with us the whole time. And if you haven't, then you just get an adult book, and it's adult a jump off point. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, Prime, Prime, come, now hold on, Prime comes off like what we wanted, what what we expected Icon to be. Yeah, that's high praise right there. <laughs> no, because no, because the, the weird thing about the weird thing a lot of people who don't read the comics don't know, Icon is not somebody that the black community would actually ride with the moment right. he opens his mouth. You're yeah. just like, oh, <laughs> he's very disconnected, especially initially, which is why they had to pair him with Rocket in the first. Mm. Year. <laughs> so. But yeah, for me, Prime, I really wanted Prime to feel authentically, you know, black. He's superhuman, yeah, of course, which I don't want to get too much of this story away from. But he, he, I wanted him to feel black. I wanted him to understand, like, the struggle like, from a ground level, you know what I'm saying? So that was very, very important for, for Prime. And I also didn't want to, I didn't want to nerf Prime. Like a lot of times when you've got these characters that are super, super strong, super durable, whatever, you have to nerf them to be able to tell a good story with them. And I'm like, I ain't bringing Prime out unless he has a formidable, a formidable opponent. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. whenever you see him, he's going to he's gonna be 100% every time. Yeah, and, that, and that's actually a really smart choice to your behalf because we've, we've seen – so many weird things from a lot of the mainstream heroes when it comes to their their writing path. Easy, easy one, Superman. His like uh, his powers have been all over the place. All over the place, yeah. Don't get me on my Superman soapbox. It really irritates me. 
Like one of the biggest. <laughs> no, things. speak your mind. <laughs> like speak your mind. Like, I don't know if you guys remember this movie, uh, the, the the Superman All Stars or versus the All Stars. Yeah, All Stars versus Superman. the Elite. The, no, no, Superman versus versus the Elite, the movie. Um, right. Oh the whole yeah. Movie, he's holding back <laughs> against these guys, like these guys that he can clearly like tear their ass up. Like you know what I'm saying and. And then at the at the last five ten minutes of the movie, finally just finally unlocks, unleashes all his powers and shows them like y'all could have did this the whole time. Like I was just letting y'all get y'all shit off. And it's like yo, why? Like why are you doing mm-hmm. that? Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like and Superman ain't got no hand in hand skills either. He be getting his ass beat. And so I was like, yeah, we can't. I said I can't do that. I like, I hate stories when you gotta depower the the hero to make it good. The only What's the purpose of giving the power the to only- him in the first place. Mm-hmm. The only time I ever I ever gave <laughs> Superman credit for holding back was in that scene he had in Justice League Unlimited, and you could tell it was all the whole scene was written by Paul Dini when he was just breaking down the dark side. He was he was like, "You just don't get it." He was like, right. "I always have to be careful. The whole world is practically made of paper to me." Right. <laughs> He's like, but just he's, take it. he's pressing the earth. He, he's sitting there worried about. <laughs> I'm like, yo, man. Yes, I like that you had that example, Corey. Because if you're gonna be a superhero who's that powerful, I need to hear an excuse as to why you're not being full powered right now or going full power right now. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna be thoroughly confused and uninterested. Right. But especially after all these years of seeing repetitive work or. The, like disappointing, you know, su- like superheroes. People now they know better. <laughs> so I'm just waiting that, for the glorious day, the end of the Batman and Superman era. I'm tired of it. Oh, talk to me. Talk to me. Su- su- that's, look, that's Superman. Superman's played out overrated. I'm sorry, I don't <laughs> care for it anymore. Goddamn Boy Scout. And a hypocrite if you really saw some of the other stories. Well, you can't do this. You got to hold yourself back. But let something happen to Lois. We're all fucked if that's the case. <laughs> so one that and then Batman is just a shitty, shitty human being. Like the, the Bat <laughs> family. More relevant. I feel like he's more relevant huh? to. What? I feel like Batman's more relevant to the type of either anti-heroes or even the villains of the real world and it's you know do you get what i'm trying to say like where i'm going with this i mean batman's the villain of gotham like he got all that money he can fix <laughs> he, gotham he's the villain of gotham. that's what like, i mean you like <laughs> that every day in the real world. all that money to fix gotham he out here just putting his hands on normal people yeah oh, you try you out here selling drugs just uh to feed your starving family not in my neighborhood. He's out here acting like the... <laughs> you with into an and then like, send you to the hospital. Like, yeah. like, Batman would be the type of person that would have his... Like, that would host a Squid Games. And you would, like... <laughs> and, like, I like Batman. But, like, also, I feel like he's going to get old and bored and be like... When they have an American Squid Game, like no, when he gets old and bored, he has he makes new sidekicks. Right. <laughs> right. No, like no, like, like for real. At no, actively at like active sidekicks, he has. There's like nine of them. And no, mind you, they all start. They all start as kids. Yeah, I'm gonna raise you like I'm your dad. Treat you like shit from time to time. Oh, is that your girlfriend? I'm a fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he, he did. He did. Uh, I mean, Nightwing dirty with that one. Uh, yeah, but, you know, but I think you know everything you guys point out. Batman and and Batman and Superman are, are just the prime example of the fact that these, which is I think this is as a as a comic book fan. Like I was a comic book fan first, mm-hmm. and then anime and manga. But I think that that's an example of why manga and anime are becoming more popular in comics because. With, 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 there's one mangas aren't afraid to do new shit and they stick to it and then they follow through with it. In comics, mm-hmm. they'll try something new, they'll reboot, and if it don't work, they'll just they'll retcon it. They'll be like, oh, well, none of that was actually real. We're going to go back to these old stories that you guys are used to. And there's no more, there's only so many ways you can tell the same story. You know, mm-hmm. and that's kind of why 
these these American comics are starting to stale. I think DC and Marvel both need to just die, like completely. Mm. Not the movies though. They can keep the Marvel. They can keep the movies. Keep the them. Comics, they can keep oh. like comics, I'm, I'm done with both of them personally. I don't want them to die. I just want like focus on different characters because the comics are good, but like when it comes to their animated movies, it is mostly mostly just Batman, Batman and Friends. I would love to see, and I know this would probably be difficult for like a creator or a founder um, who creates and publishes comics, but I would love to see like Marvel or Marvel or DC picking up you know, established comics and stories that exist out here that are fresh and, you know, and help these stories get out to a bigger audience. Even though I know a lot of people want to have their own, but I would just love if if it could happen, especially with like a black creator this year, next year. I mean, if they would have called me, you know, I got some ideas. For you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I give them some. I give them some of my throwaways. I ain't gonna give them none of my main stuff. And that's, what I like. that's what I like to see because, and I think that companies as big as Marvel and DC should do stuff like that, where it's like if let everybody else eat too, because you're gonna still keep eating. Like your cells yeah. are not going to uh, plummet because you put on one creator. Like you're gonna be fine. If anything, you might get more money because you're putting on something that people want to like read <laughs> and, and, yeah. and indulge in. Which they have tried that. I mean, they tried that. You know, well, they tried it and failed with Milestone. And then yeah. They came back and they had Todd East Coates doing the Black Panther for Marvel. It there's and then oh, there's this other mm-hmm. dope, this dope mm-hmm. black writer they just hired at Marvel, and I can't remember her name right now, and it's going to make me upset. Uh, but. <laughs> they tried it to varying mm-hmm. degrees, but it's also like, well, here, we got to color within these lines with these characters. It's like, nah, let somebody come in and really, like, the, the way they just gave Alan Hickman the free run with the X-Men, he did some great work uh, mm-hmm. all the, uh, on, the, on the new X-Men line. Yes. He's killing it right now. But I'm, they gave nobody no, they gave nobody just, else no leash like that. I'm just, ha- I'm just happy to see X-Men back. Yes. Mm-hmm. Back in uh, the and and I mean Hickman's an excellent writer, so yeah. he, uh, he he's he has a great follow through. Uh, I have uh, I have not had I have not had anything upset me from any of his works, which reminds me, <clears throat> what was the first comic you ever read? Well, first what was comic. The, what was the comic that put you on? So I'm from a small town of Carolina. <laughs> Let me start there. <laughs> so the, that does first, mean something. That does mean right. something. <laughs> so the the first comic that I ever read, my mom took me to this com this comic book store. We had one little comic book store in my hometown for like for like two years. It was like in, in and out. And uh, the first comic I ever read was Spawn. Spawn oh, number one. Wow. And she had no idea what she had just given. But <laughs> look at but, that. Uh, that, that. That's a wild I've, first I've comic to read. I've never heard that before. Right. I've never heard that. Like my first comic was I've never. Like, it was on sale. You know, I remember. It, I remember walking in the store and being just overwhelmed with like just everything. And I was like, I, she's like, I, 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 so that Barton then right there. And I was like, <laughs> okay. so I went in there and I picked. I rummaged through it. And I was like, spawn. It was like it was like three dollars. And I was like, yeah, let me get this. And that was the first comic I ever read. Most of I was a big novel reader when I was younger, um, and I got a lot of my comic novels from the Marvel, the Marvel comic uh, cartoon shows that were out at the time, like X Men animated series, Spider Man, you know, all these things. Um, so that's really where my love of like the comic characters came from. Um, yeah, Spawn number one. That was uh, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm like that. <laughs> Died in that first comic, <laughs> bro, and then like, you take I'm, a trip to hell. Bro, I'm pretty sure my mom, my mom being the Bible bumping Christian lady she is, didn't she didn't? I don't think she's read that comic to this day. Like so, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, so that she don't know what she did. Funnier. Yeah, she don't. She definitely doesn't. The know irony. Did. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Corey, I'm I wouldn't sure let my son read that. Oh I'm sorry. God. I'm just imagining if she had took a look at the comic and been like, "Woo, sweet Jesus!" Mm-mm. What have no I right. done? 
What have I she done? Have, she'd have rolled that thing up and bust me in the head with it, even picking it up. <laughs> <laughs> My mom was that go outside and get that switch lady. Like, uh, <laughs> I'd have got a whooping in the car for thinking about picking it up. <laughs> <laughs> she did, no, she she would have made you pick up a Jesus comic, right? She'd have because <laughs> you know they're the reading the Archie and Sonic the Hedgehog. Archie, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then Corey, again, even Archie them get wild. Archie, they did. Junkie got stabbed. They do. Right. Um, I know what throws you off about Archie is the is the art style. It don't look like. You get violent, but then they'd be like, oh, some real ass shit just happened in Archie. <laughs> All right, what about that? What about that first manga, man? That's my first manga, I, the first manga I actually read. That's a good one. I ain't never uh the first one I actually read probably. Ooh, man, probably Honestly, probably Twin Star Exorcist. I I didn't pick up. I didn't start reading manga until 2014. Like Ooh. reading, and I would watch the anime. You know, I had watched the anime, but I would never. I never actually picked up a manga until I was stationed in Japan. Mm -hmm. I, I was kind of rumbling, through, rumbling through stuff, and I was like, "Oh, this looks cool." What a and, great way to really yeah. indulge in manga, reading yeah. it in its place of origin, is seeing it in action. <laughs> In a yeah, way. Japan and Korea, like those two places, I got real heavy into like manga reading now. And now, you know, I try to stay as active as I can. Um, mm -hmm. one of the re so, up until, so full disclosure, I had never watched Naruto. That's uh, okay. Until mm -hmm. like probably like 2019, like for real. And I had wrote a, I worked on a story called Asada. I'm um, y'all like some exclusive stuff. And I'm breaking the story down, and my homie's like, matter of fact, Keith, uh, one of my partners here, he's like, yo, that shit sound like Naruto. And I'm like, no, this ain't like Naruto, man. I ain't never, <laughs> I ain't, I was like, I ain't never even seen ain't Naruto. Never seen he's, it. Like, he's, he's like, nah, he's like, yo, that's just like Naruto. So I'm, I go back, <laughs> so I sit and I binge watch the first, like, just the first Naruto before, not even shipping it yet. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, this shit is just like my shit. Wow. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, how does this happen? <laughs> well, I know right now. <laughs> and My so man. I ended up having to, yeah, I had to go right. back to the storyboard. <laughs> I was like, when I tell you my feelings was hurt, like I was like, this is crazy. So, so yeah, now nah, that I thought that was a little funny little story. It, it, it kind of it just tell you how like there's nothing new. There's nothing new on the design. yeah. You just figure out how to make put your spin on it. But Naruto is such a um relatable. I think that's why it's so big. No, listen, hear me out, Corey. Like, I think there's so many themes that people can connect to. So I don't yeah. think it's very difficult to come up with stories from our own, like, I don't know, experiences that could be similar to something in Naruto, which has been going on for decades now. <laughs> so <laughs> it has had time to pick up lots of themes. I definitely think it's more realistic than people give it credit for. It it it, or it definitely has its moments where yeah. it's just like, oh, it's trying to get me in my feelings. But yeah. the problem with it, I think, is that they don't always follow through with it properly. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, it, it'll get you like in, but then it just kind of, oh, well, we're going to do some crazy ninja shit right here. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's a great foundation for maybe like my generation, the younger millennials um because <laughs> some of y'all in this Corey, <laughs> hush old old millennial so <laughs> we've well, seen some things before naruto but i think it's a great foundation and then we have some manga and we have great anime now that takes mm -hmm. it five punches past naruto five what? words past naruto. <laughs> i'm sorry I have one big issue. I have, I have a few big issues with Naruto, and one of my biggest is his design. His design makes absolutely no sense to me. How are you a ninja wearing bright Cause he's orange? Because he's one, he's stupid. Two, they <laughs> wanted you to understand how annoying this little motherfucker is. What's an annoying ass color? Put that little motherfucker in all orange. They wanted to appeal to the American audience. 
audience. They wanted to appeal to the American audience who love that blonde hair, blue eye, bright, colorful cartoon character. Because they wanted it to they wanted it to come over here, guys. He knew what he was doing from day one. I, I you know my I just, issue with Naruto design really it, it wasn't until you got to see his parents, and it's like this motherfucker really don't look like either one of his parents. <laughs> either one of them. Like, it is, <laughs> he's one I'm of like, the spawns. Like right, boy, like, you don't look like you don't look like you got dead Naruto daddy. with the red hair. Like Naruto with the red hair would be would have been a way better design. That would have been fire. Naruto yeah. with the red hair. So many bitches. He would have pulled so <laughs> many bitches. Right? But they gave him blonde hair so that you knew that Minato was his dad. Because otherwise, if he had red hair, we would be questioning. He, like, he gave he him did. blonde hair to appeal to she the cauliflower did. brigade. That's what they had. Right. That's why they oh gave him blonde hair. <laughs> the parchment paper. I had a question like for BD, though. I know we're on the oh. but I've had this question for a, a minute. I'm sure Corey has other questions, but I wanted to like rewind because you okay. already spoken about how you were stationed in Korea um, when you had that kind of first concept. Um, and obviously, like I know on the website, not only does it say, say it says like concept one is black owned, but it says veteran owned, which I feel like is not something we see very often. Are there themes in the stories um, that come from your experiences um, in the military? Absolutely. And if there are, could you point out like maybe one or two prominent things without spoiling that. anything? I would say the two biggest examples of me pulling from like my military experience is probably like if you read the outlaws, the the dynamic of the team and the outlaws is very much like one of one of my units that I was with, and how they how we the bantered how we all kind of made un, un, like inappropriate jokes, <laughs> like you know what I mean, like <laughs> it, like it, and it was in the, in the military. What, what I found and and maybe you guys find is that our view of death. Is different than normal people. So mm -hmm. like we'll make jokes that probably normal people won't get, and it's like mm -hmm. it's morbid and dark humor and it's all that stuff. Um, but then that's I my shit, say, right? But then the I'll say the biggest example is actually the story Free Fall Gods, which we did. Which that's all military based. It's like a futuristic military based story, but I'm pulling directly from like everything I've learned. Doing working with different groups and different and, and different. Um, it's everything you wanted the military to be when you were. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Like I always want. So I can say there's a there's a moment in that story where like uh, the, the commandant he comes and he finds the main character. He's like, "You, you're gonna come work with me." <laughs> and it's like, "Yeah, I really, I, I always wanted that to happen." Because there's a thing in the military called oh. step promotion. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do great work. You gotta do like exemplary work, you know what I mean? Uh, and they'll, your commander can be like, "Oh, you gonna go up to this next rank because you're awesome. You ain't got to test." <laughs> and I was like, "I always wanted that shit to happen. Like, it never happened." Again. There was this kid. Then there was just two. There was two times I seen it happen when I was in the military. It was a kid. I don't know he. They made a movie about it. Actually, he saved those people on a from a shooter on a train. Um, they ended up making a movie about it, and he actually played himself in the movie. It was weird. Interesting. But. Hollywood, I guess. Career and then, change. <laughs> yeah, and then there was this lady that had been pregnant, and she she had been putting all this work and as like doing all stuff while she was pregnant. And then when she had the baby, they stepped the motor because she missed uh, the testing window. And I was like, that's dope. But yeah, that was the only two times I ever seen it. And I was like, they never come down where I was at. <laughs> I was like, hey, they beat him. You've been putting in all that work. <laughs> you right. Get be, <laughs> you get to be this promotion. Like, so yeah, so I was like, I definitely wrote that in there for something I wanted to happen. Listen, if that happened to you, we may not be able to sit here talking to you about all that you've done because right. who knows yeah. where you would be right now. Still be, you could be the one yeah, promoting someone saying, Hey, you, um, you could be, I definitely would be. Admit it. That's, they knew better, they knew better not to give me the power. <laughs> Now, now you can send the guys on shit details. <laughs> right. Oh, that definitely. I can tell y'all so many stories. Uh, but 
like I don't want to I don't want to turn this into the military podcast, but yeah. hey, look, we have, we have a we have a few we have a few listeners who are definitely vets, so trust me, they will resonate. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 you know, I always talk talk to people like going to basic training, going to like you know tech school, A school, whatever branch you're in. That's just like going to college almost, because it's mm-hmm. like you hate it while you're there. The whole time you're you hating it, you're just trying to get out. And like, but some of the funniest shit happens while you're there. Like, <laughs> stuff that you will never forget. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> I, I, and so it was my my time in the military was both. It was conflicting. Really, it was great. It was terrible. I wanted mm-hmm. more freedom, but I liked the structure. You know, and so I'll. Um, I'm grateful for everything I learned and put me in a position to think and function and not be afraid to go and do what I want to do. Uh, but, you know, it, it, I think the military is great as long as you have a plan and you kind of run through, you know, you run through your plan, you got to focus on what you're doing, stick to it, and then get to, go, to, go get your bag. Yeah, see? You all, see y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? Because I feel like young listeners would need to hear something like that and to just be able to see the example of someone do one thing with their life, especially like blurs like us, to see that you worked and did something else and you still decided to do something with your creativity that was inspired by like, you know, being a blur, you know, that blur side of you. Um, we don't always have those examples. A lot of us see people literally working the worst jobs and then maybe just maybe their art will make it. Um, or they right. end up doing things they hate for all of their lives just to pay for a comic, just to pay for a convention. So it's yeah. good to see you mm-hmm. as an example. Definitely. Hey, I appreciate that. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to make it to everybody else. I think, you know, the best thing you could ever do, if, if you're a creative person, the best thing you could ever do is just, just do it, just go. Because as soon as you put the doubt in, if you put the doubt in the in the, in the fear in your work, it, you're holding yourself back before, you, get to, before yeah. you can even take off. You can't get off the runway that way. So Thanks. just go for it. Yes, that's a super villain. Literally, when you doubt yourself, you're inviting the super villain into your home. Like yeah. you give up being a hero, you surrendered. Like defeat me now. <laughs> Type vibes. You got Who's one of your Who's one of your favorite villains? Ooh, sorry. Doubt. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> no, sorry. Um. One of my favorite villains. I'm like, oh, I don't want to say some serious, some serious shit, but I probably will anyway. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> if it's your favorite, doesn't matter if it's stereotypical. Yeah. Listen. Um, you will. You may or may not be judged. Just saying. I mean, you know, they probably can judge me. So, um, <laughs> so I would say, honestly, one of my favorite villains is Kingpin. Mm. Like, because Kingpin be winning. Like low key, Kingpin wins a lot, and I'm like, I think people don't realize, like, yo, he really, he really be getting all this shit off, and ain't he don't get it. He barely gets arrested. Like he has, he mm-hmm. has gotten, he has gotten, you know, he's gotten the shit beat out of him a couple of times. He's still Kingpin. Yeah, I'm about to say, he's uh, still Kingpin. That one, that one yeah. time in prison, uh, Peter Parker. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I respect Kingpin, but that Peter definitely had him held up by his titties. <laughs> Yeah, that, you know, that was one time though. Like, that was that one time he used to let him know, like, hey, I could come get you whenever I want, but hey. The great power, great responsibility, right. and all that. Bullshit. But I like Kingpin. I like how he had his whole, like, because I feel like, because sometimes I sit and think, like, if I was a villain, how would I have my shit set up? And it would definitely be, like, on some Kingpin shit. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because like, I'm going to have my underling. That's a good answer. That's so, a yeah. good answer. See, I like the Kingpin. But the one person I always put above him, just because he's that to a higher level, and especially the way he holds himself in public, Lex yeah. Luthor. Yeah. Yeah. See, but Lex, Lex is Lex is a different kind of person. But Lex was trying. Lex is the president and all kind of shit. Like Lex is a monster <laughs> out here. Yo, no, yo, Lex will do everything no. to spite no. his enemy. <laughs> right. No, that yo, that was that was one of the funniest storylines ever. <laughs> Lex Luthor ran for president, not just to get the gains, but to piss off Superman. That's relevant, it. more reason. Lex Luthor is more relevant to how we see people now than how Superman is. Like, <laughs> absolutely. And it to make really it worse, he ran a clean campaign. Right. 
<laughs> no, no, uh, he, like, he, was, he trumped these folks. Okay. He's like, yo, Superman was so paranoid thinking he was going to run some sort of scheme. That was the crazy part. He had, him twisted up. he had my man twisted up, like what, you, like what, trying to find the hook, and then what the hook was, there was no hook. Like, <laughs> like now, hey, that's how you know that you're living in your your enemy head. Like, okay, bro, yeah. Break, break. <laughs> You know, the funny thing about villains, like, if you go to this certain website, they, like, cast villains in different whatever. And, like, Kingpin's villain whatever is, like, obsessed crime lord. Like, that's his box that they put him in. And that's just so funny because if you look at, like, other villains, they're just, like, alien or, like, whatever. Some sort of, of like, they want to avenge something. But just... Kingpin is obsessed crime lord. Like he's so obsessed with crime. Money. Money. <laughs> like, that's the money. 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 That's, why <laughs> that's the thing of crime lord that he's a super villain. <laughs> that's why I think Vincent D'Onofrio did a great job of him in that um yes. in that no. Daredevil yeah. series. Yeah. But you know, everybody yeah. knows a yeah. kingpin or somebody that wants to be a kingpin. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I think he's so I think he's so awesome because you could, if you grew up in certain areas, you could say, "Well, I seen that before." Like I, I seen yeah, people that thanks. just want to be spiteful and do bad shit just because. It's like uh, that episode of Boondocks. He was like, "I just want to." Uh, he said, "I want to smoke some cigarettes." And do like <laughs> 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 or, or, or the other episode. Well, go ahead and say it, Engine. Say it. That's why we drink Hennessy. That's why we smoke menthols. That's why we these niggas. We likes to ruin shit. Right. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, are you ready for 2022 for the boondocks to return? No. <laughs> no. To be honest, I, I forgot that there was a season four. Like I was watching boondocks recently on HBO or Max, or I believe it was. And I forgot there was a season four. Like, I had completely erased season four out of my memory. Season you know four saying? was not written by Aaron Magruder. And and so I'm like, I'm really skeptical about this new show because my thing Aaron is- Aaron Magruder's back at the helm. But can things like that even exist right now besides Rick and Morty? Like, you know what I'm saying? That, That's my that concern. Part, that part. It, people so sensitive right now. Some with you know warranted, you know, you know, some of us warranted. And it's like, but how? It's it's really hard that climate that they're gonna step into. I'm not sure how it's gonna work. Now I think we'll love it, you know what I mean? But I don't know what they're gonna own. Because and it would be so. so relevant, right? Like it would do so good for mm-hmm. us right now. Because yeah, when yeah. you rewatch Boondocks from back then and you look at now. There's Bruh. so many things that we can point to that feels now, but the way people respond to it now is so different. And I feel like we need those things that can like help break up the tension through laughter and putting all of this fucked up shit that we go through on like this comedic platform. We need it so bad. You know what? Ironically, yes, uh, I agree with you. There's one, all right, there's two semi-decent episodes in season four the first episode which pretty much michael b jordan is playing chris brown (laughs) i'm sorry yeah and the last episode where riley said somebody us what somebody was doing something gay and they tried to cancel him so stupid so stupid it's such a dumb show Oh my goodness! Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, oh I think gone. he, I think he froze out. No. You are out. That reminds me. Oh no! Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> he not even here back. to get the message. <laughs> we'll wait there for him is. to come back. Oh, there was something I was gonna say about um the freaking boondocks and the sensitivity thing. Uh, it was it was actually quite funny and now I forgot, so it's through me. <laughs> boondocks. Well, well, so funny. Well, well I haven't we, even seen all of the boondocks and I, and, but what I've seen I, like is funny. 
Well, I could say this one thing while he's going, and it just came across my little news feed, and it's bleh. Rockstar has announced that they're doing HD rem- uh, bringbacks of Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. Listen, I'm not mad at Vice City because I absolutely love Vice City. And- okay, see, I feel like that is okay, right? But, oh, that's what I was going to say. These reboots and these redos and continuations, I feel like for the past three years, have been so poorly timed. Like, I feel like the interview with the vampire is poorly timed. Because there's nothing right now happening that tells you that we want more vampires. What we do in the shadows is a, is a hit. Is a hit comedy about vampires. But even that, but people are like not looking for this vampire stuff. We're just not. I'm not saying that like it's a I'm bad tired idea. of I just, it. I think it's poorly timed. I think there are people who are going to be interested, but I feel like we're getting hit with too much nostalgia and that they're not doing it time well. Like that craft stuff, that was not timed well. I feel well, like. Well, no, not the. All right. The, the craft movie, not all, I wouldn't even say it was timed well. It was a horribly done movie. Excuse me. Yeah, and but it's like even if it was horribly done, you could have better prepared us for it by doing certain things marketing wise. You could have got the old actresses together and re released something. You know what I'm saying? Because then when you bring to us, oh, we're going to be doing a continuation of the craft. As an audience, we're going to be more prepared and more interested in wanting that. Okay. I just, I'm just not with. Uh, I think a lot of these just reboots and stuff are just so. I'm okay with some of them, but most of them I'm just like completely underwhelmed by because I don't understand the point. There's so many new stories and there's so many other things being redone. You're kind of messing up like. The shit that we love by having these things, we're just going to completely ignore them. At some it point. also it also just shows how much uh, how afraid uh, most of ho- most of Hollywood is about new IPs. Just like the and it's almost and it's almost like the gaming world. A lot of them are afraid of new IPs. They're afraid to take risks. That's why a lot of that's why a lot of hit shows and or movies get sold to streaming services he's and the, when they would have actually done well <laughs> he's back. in theaters. And he's back. That's very true, that. Corey. That's from very out true. of space. Mm. <laughs> that was we were different. talking about how well, I have brought up that I think a lot of these reboots um, and continuations are very poorly timed. I feel like we're getting hit with too many um, within a short amount of time and it doesn't make like interview with the vampire is that called it it's right interview with the vampire vampire. i feel like it's very poorly timed because we're not talking about the book we're not talking about the movie as much and i think that sometimes it takes a little bit of marketing give us a reason to care about it again now all alternative people alternative black people whatever will be so interested. They love Anne Rice, but it's not enough to make it something I feel like we will all be running to the movie theater for. Well, no. Well, that's why this is going to be on television. It's not what we're going to be running to turn our televisions to. I don't know. We got to we got to see. They haven't even they haven't even began filming. We uh we got we got to see what they're bringing to the They haven't begun begun filming. Stop. It. Just stop. It. <laughs> Just or stop. or market to us better market to you us. know exactly you more than anybody know exactly how i feel all these reboots going on i'm i'm sick of it tired of it some of them about reboots right it's it's really a it's a slippery slope really like some reboots are awesome like some reboots I, for me personally i really love the um not blade runner but uh the one 2049 no, it was Colin Farrell. He did the. It was one Lord that just went in my brain. Total, Total Recall. Total Recall. I love the Total Recall reboot. Re- 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 a lot of people didn't like it. I like mm-hmm. it. Um, I, it. I think, I like but I think there's certain movies that don't need to be reboot rebooted. Like, and I think that's the problem. We getting we getting oversaturated with reboots, where it's like, okay, hold up, did we really need a live action 
Lion King, Mulan, all this stuff. Like we didn't need none of that. Like you know what I'm saying? So I think the Beauty and the Beast I enjoyed, but uh, the rest of it we we didn't need it. We didn't need it. We didn't need it, but at least I get it. Yeah. At least I get yeah. that Disney it's, is doing a live action project of all. But that's things. because Disney is afraid of doing new stuff. Oh, that Absolutely. is so true. Marvel is the and Marvel when they the do do new stuff, content. Mm -hmm. when they do to new do new stuff, they fuck it up. They half ass it. Look at Artemis Fowl. Look at Star Wars. We <laughs> go. Again. <laughs> I'm so yeah, angry. You, you've already missed several good rants on Star Wars. Look, look, Demon is like literally passed out because he's sick. Yeah. He's sick of it. Oh man, I killed him. Hey, come back, please. <laughs> and the, and the, and, and I'm the, so tired about him, about the Skywalkers and the Palpatines. And you know what the uh, crazy part is? I feel like whoever writes for Honest Trailer listens to our podcast. Because they made it, they, they took my joke for Star Wars Visions. They were like, yeah, they pretty much took it and outsourced. They took they took they took Star Wars ideas and outsourced them to Japan and hoped for the best. Hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so amazing stuff came out of it. I don't know. My thing, my only issue with the Star Wars movies is I feel like if they wouldn't have put them in the sequential like episodes, I think they would have been better received. They would have just made a Ray movie. And called it Ray, whatever. Then I think it would have been better received. The fact is, there was there was already the Fate of the Jedi trilogy that was written already. The books were there, and they completely went against it. And then they rewrote it and put some trash in there, marketed us a black Jedi that we thought was going to get, and we didn't get. And then it's like you know, pandering. To, exactly. To me, I think that if that story was just, if they didn't call it Episode. Seven, eight, nine, or whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> it, I don't think it would have been as poorly received. In my, um, that's just my thought. I, I see what you're saying, but I'm also going to say that it also doubt comes back to the fact that J.J. Abrams really doesn't know how to make movies. That too. Dang, that too. Damn. Damn. Yeah, There's an entire. The whole a galaxy far, far away, the entire universe. Why are we stuck on this one motherfucking like, family? And here's the out weird of part. An entire galaxy, this one motherfucking JJ, family. Here's the weird part. JJ Abrams knows how to start things, but he has no idea how to finish any of them. Look at Lost. Mm. Mm. And why you put Look my at the business out there like that? <laughs> Look at the Cloverfield <laughs> franchise. Oh, don't even talk oh. about it. Just, uh, the first you, one was great. The second one was cool, but it somehow, I don't know how it's related to Cloverfield. It honestly right. seems like it was its own movie. Then at the end, they were like, yeah, add aliens and make it. No, I felt like the first Cloverfield and was then, like a start high. And I just, right. I just felt like it's going to be it, bad, it went, like after. It went from sugar to shit. <laughs> I mean, I'll say this though: JJ Abrams better than M Night Shyamalan. Lord, Lord, don't do not defend this man. Shyamalan, do. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm not oh. defending. I'm not defending M Night Shyamalan. Huh. Uh, the he know what he did. The problem with M Night Shyamalan, he, he, he's horrible at follow through as well. No because no, no. he doesn't Unbra care unbreakable was, unbreakable was good split was surprisingly awesome glass <laughs> shit i feel like split was not even his work i just like right. we're just... his name was on it but he ain't do that <laughs> like <laughs> i'm giving all the credit to split to my man McAvoy. like he the one that did that just like, like the old, one old was okay because it felt relevant. I, like, I, I, think relevant. I wasn't even sure about watching that. I only watched it because I got invited to a, a, a free screening. So I was like, okay, I'll go see it, whatever. And I, I was surprised, but it was only good because it was based off of things that we're experiencing right now. And But it was a lot of things that was... If it wasn't for that concept of the movie, like M. Night Shyamalan, that was a concept you could not F up. And he tried, right. he tried. He tried. He tried to get it out of he here. He tried to mess it up. 
just like so, uh, just like the other movie did the visit where the kids went to go stay with their grandparents and the grandparents was acting weird as hell <laughs> and like we all kind of we all, we all kind of knew where the twist was going to be we just didn't know when it was going to happen M. Night Shyamalan, his, his movie collect, his, his, his like filmography is like Eminem's discography. It's like <laughs> one or two really good things and then a bunch of trash with everybody. Like, no, he's the shit. But the weird part is, even Eminem knows when he phones it in. <laughs> I'm like, even, as a, look, that's a whole nother. I'm a, I'm a super hip hop head. I, I really do not like the, like the, 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 pedestal people put Eminem on in his career. I'm like, he only has like two or three good albums. Every other album is trash. You, me and my mom were just talking about this. Yo. I'm not here for the albums. I'm here to watch that man decide to ruin someone else's career. <laughs> I, 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 I don't even listen to him. How many hey, look, how many it doesn't, it doesn't matter how many he did. It's what matters what the aftermath he wrapped the masculinity out of machine gun <laughs> kelly megan fox did that to machine gun kelly uh, I, don't, I don't know man MGK uh, was looking for a way to get out of hip-hop right oh, he absolutely. wanted to transition he wanted an epic way to transition out of hip-hop so he said let me come at eminem he knew what he was doing <laughs> i mean but he had already started acting at that point he wasn't really trying to if Machine Gun Kelly ain't hip hop, man. He not. He, he was never hip hop. Like he a wild boy. That's what he said. He a <laughs> that's wild. It, that's boy. it. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. He, he definitely that. I mean, you want to talk about bodies though? Eminem ain't really got no bodies. No, Machine he doesn't. Gun have... Kelly, Machine Gun Kelly, Benzino, like, <laughs> like they not even really rappers. Everlast, <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, ain't nobody putting them. But that's the thing. Get no Mariah Carey. He tried to get Mariah Carey. <laughs> Yeah, she, she did. Look, she did try that. Listen, the thing the thing about the thing about Eminem is he he'll come he'll come at someone just to see if they'll respond, and if they actually respond with something worth coming back at, he'll go for it. Like like most of that album, he came at a lot of rappers, but it was like a lot of these guys really aren't gonna take the time to come at come back at you, like. Right. You tried to come at Kendrick. It's like, eh, like, nah. he don't like, want that it's, he it's don't like, want those it's like, I don't, it's like, I don't okay. think, I don't think you really want to start something there. But I guess you had to shoot at everybody. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, I mean, more rounds you shoot, less aim you take. <laughs> no, I don't even really. And, I haven't even listened even, to a song of his in so long. Even when it came to Kendrick, it was a jab. When, but but when he came at Tyler, when he came at Tyler and Machine Gun, it was straight kidney shots. Right. But ironically, it, even in his he like yeah, Tyler, I want a challenge. Like, I want to see more from you. I like you. But Machine Gun right. was like, yo, fuck you. Yeah. Right. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I got a love hate relationship with Eminem because Marshall Mathers LP to me is one of the best albums i've ever heard like no. as a pure rap fan and then like it's just like you go from that the eminem show still a really great album to just hot just garbage you know? <laughs> okay, hot wait. Water. so all right i got this is so random but since you like hip hop <laughs> and you like rap how do you feel about 21 savage uh, Said he, he exists. Said <laughs> <Dead. laughs> like, like he. I mean, he's he's around. Like, I mean, he does stuff. Said I like. Said. <laughs> uh -oh, my bad. I got no. That's me. No, this that's is for her. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's for her. Get out. I just wanted to know because you know, I just wanted to know. I respect Twenty One Savage because he seems like. He seems like he's trying to evolve into something else, but I mean, but I'm a like I'm I'm you know I grew up in the, I grew up on '90s hip hop like he just don't do it. For me. I, I, I mean? he doesn't do it. He didn't do it for me either. But I listened to a couple of his albums recently, 
And I felt this feeling that I would feel, because I used to listen to Eminem a lot and other rappers when I was younger. And I had the feeling that I had when I was younger, when I listened to Savage Mode 2 with Metro Boomin, 21 Savage, I really felt it. I was like, yo, I'm really in the hood in this album. Like, that's how I felt. Like, oh, wow. And I'm not wow. in the hood. Like, <laughs> I felt like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in the hood. Like, <laughs> I just, I... But it took me there. It took me there the way that Eminem took me to the trailer park is the way that Metro took me to the hood. Like, that's, oh, I yeah. mean, Savage okay. took me. Savage. <laughs> but, you, but you know, the one thing I realized about Eminem and the reason, the reason a lot of his work is not consistent, he did something that a lot of trouble rappers don't do. What's that? When he got money, he got therapy. He actually started taking he care of that. Him. Like, he, think he about it. That bad. Think about it. He got yeah, yeah. therapy. He got off of drugs and alcohol. He actually and cleaned then, up. Yep. And his music suffered. <laughs> 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 Look, I, one thing I will give Eminem credit for, which I don't give a lot yeah. of, and, and I get into the the, the white Not rapper, black one. rapper debate a lot. Eminem never turned his back on the culture. And I respect that. A lot of these guys, a lot of these people come into the culture, they get on, and then they switch up immediately, post them on. MGK. Uh, yeah, exactly. They come in, they use hip hop to get hot, then they leave. Eminem, he actually took a stance that backed the culture. He, he took, he when he did that, um, he did that freestyle against Trump, which alienated a lot of his audience. He that, didn't care. But, right, but but he, he did it because it was the right thing to do, and I respect it. It wasn't that great of a freestyle, but we ain't gonna get into that. But <laughs> he um, he definitely he definitely hasn't turned his back on the culture, so I definitely respect him for that. But I mean, I just don't think that if you, all I'm saying is if you got ten albums, if you got if you shoot if you shoot ten three pointers, you only make three. They gonna say you got a poor percentage, right? You're not a good shooter. So it's like he got all these albums, but he only got three really good ones, and he got and the rest of them are just kind of. But then, how do you but, feel about Jay Z? Uh, I think Jay Z is Why? on the hill. I think he's on the hill. I think he, you have to put him on the hill. I mean, he has great albums. He has yeah, his he catalog was great. Yeah, um, I mean, from he was he was killing it just from the streets is watching. Right, you know. Mm -hmm. what I mean, so I'm just like, you can't not Jay. Even if he's not your favorite, you can't. You, that's how. You that's can't how deny. I feel. It. That's how I feel. You can't deny because I really do like Jay Z. I listen. I'm not like the biggest, biggest hip hop head, but I do really listen to people I like. I really like Jay Z. I feel like some people who don't like him now, like you really acting like he like he didn't do it for you ten years ago. Right. So Jay don't did try that. To play. Hopefully you don't have to go through that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, I think that the thing that <laughs> this is really weird. The thing that pisses me off about Jay is that the stuff that he's rapping about now, which is great. I like that he's like enlightened and he's on his like higher level shit. Nas been rapping about that shit since ninety one. And people don't want to give Nas no credit for it. They call Nas lame That's, for it. They call Nas whack and lame in the nineties because he wasn't on. He was on that other shit. It's like I love yeah, Nas exactly. Yeah. And that's and the thing is that I found so poetic about that song that they did together earlier this year with DJ Khaled was yeah. like, oh, now Jay Z's thinking like Nas, and now they're like, you know, right. I so, remember being a young kid singing "If I Rule the World" or "I Know I Can" and all that kind right. of stuff. I'm like, yo, like Nas been doing this. Nas and Pop to me are two greatest artists um, that I in my in my catalog. I love mm -hmm. both of them. Um, I grew up on Pop because that's what my got, mom too. My bad, I'm getting y'all way way off the top. No, of it's all good. Listen, <laughs> listen, we we could bring it right back into nerd shit by bringing up two rappers. Buster Rhymes. Okay. Yes. And Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott. Oh, I love Missy though. This is dope. Yeah. But if you want to talk nerd shit, rappers, both, both, both. you gotta bring up Fiasco. Of course, okay. Lupe. But okay. when it comes to nerd, yeah. when it comes to nerd shit, they wear it in their videos. Mm -hmm. Wu Tang. Wu Tang. But like Wu Tang. Yo, yeah. Wu Tang was the first hip hop blurred. No, for real. Yes, they are absolutely. the like epitome of blurred. Like, like Wu Tang literally crawled so that Lupe could skateboard. Like that's like literally. <laughs> you got like, it. Ghostface. Wait, that, wait, that's, wait, Iron I might Man. have to write that down. I like that. Yeah, that's dope. 
I gotta write like, that down. No, no, that's for real, good, I'm so passionate good, about that. Like, I love. <laughs> I, yo, I think it's amazing. Like, when you really think and about what they was rapping about way back then, like, and they was rapping like hard, and they and like, like I said, they was Method Man, all of them arguing about comics and stuff. Like, I think mm. it's super unappreciated with by most people. Like, it's it's amazing what they did when they did it. Uh, and yeah, like you said, she did what they did so everybody else can come behind them. It's awesome. Um, and that stuff in the comic books was feeling so like they related to that. They felt like they had to be almost superhuman to get through in the streets like that. Like yeah, yeah. when they yeah. go on to put on that brave face, knowing that you are really do not feel like carrying this Glock right now to go do this work right now. And mm-hmm. they just put on like they really channeled yeah. the people that they were reading about. <laughs> Those yeah. movies that they were watching, those fighters, like, yo, I'm about to be that in the streets. No one in the, their heart, they're scared of shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other mind. side of New York, Buster Rhymes was literally rapping off the walls, talking about some, yeah, son, I need a straight jacket for this music video. Wait, what? what? No. <laughs> no, Bust, I don't care what nobody say. In the 90s, Buster Rhymes had the best videos. Like, every video was like a, it's like a, it was like an epic. Like, you need, you yep. waited for that shit. It was and a blurred was like, dreams come true, come true. A blurred dreams come true. Like the th- the thing, the way you see yourself in the anime was pictured. Yeah. Like that video with uh Janet Jackson and Busta Rhymes. Yes. Like, oh, when he did I the T one thousand. That's how I used to feel. Like I'm like, yo, that's me. Like what Janet yes. Jackson was wearing, I felt like, yo, that's me. Like we look like this. <laughs> give me some old. Right, that, um, give me some yeah, to give me some over the yo, that yeah. shit, was, yeah. Like, I love Buster Rhymes. Like, I think he has he's very underrated within. Like, when we had these conversations about like legends and hip hop, like, pe- people don't bring him up enough. And I'm like, man, he was always they tripping that guy, yeah, yeah. Listen, the hip hop world took a breath when we heard he was cutting his locks. We were like, <gasps> <laughs> like why you do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, that hurt. Like we were like we weren't ready for that, but then we heard that touch it. We like, okay, we good. And then yeah. they yeah, all right. like had that Daft Punk, which you know all blurs love Daft Punk. Or even if you don't, you you know because it was yeah. all when you're playing video games. It was on at conventions, blah blah yeah. blah. So those two worlds coming together was like. So so how y'all feel about Yay right now, man? Who they? No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's a, that, I mean, I'm, I feel you. That's a that's a real response. When it comes to con, there, there's a YouTuber I, I can't recall the brother's name right now, but he he described Kanye West's career mm-hmm. as he he froze he froze because he was talking about not yay. even worse. I'm sorry, no, I'm not gonna say that. We we all love the old yay, yeah. we do, but His it's like. Collection. His catalog stops for at my twisted fantasy. I don't remember anything after that. I don't, I don't know what happened. Cause it's like it's difficult to. We know that Ye is the kind of person who pours who he is into his music. There is no separation, so yeah. I can't separate you from your music. Cause I know uh, who you uh, are is going into your music. Right, and that's the and that's the issue with that other guy that just got. Cause got he poured his. Himself into yeah. that music, so it's difficult. Whereas some music, like, like I think about some female artists, like even Beyonce. There's some music that's written for her that she would just do, yeah. like she loved it and felt it, but it wasn't really her life at the moment. But it was just a great song. Yeah. So okay, I can separate, but there's some people I just I can't do it for. And Yay, I can't do it for him, um, and I don't want to save him. Cause Ye don't want to be saved. Ye saved himself in the way he wants to. So I'm just, I like, I let Ye go. Don't wanna like, be saved, I'm yeah. saved. I let him go. Don't you? Oh, well, <laughs> he said he had to come in here to get his shit off. He's like, they wasn't hearing me. <laughs> I can't explain what happened on my end, but uh, you know, it's all good. But yeah, what I was saying was Kai West took a he took a heel turn, but he was still the heel that we all cheered for. Fuck yeah. me all. Oh. I was done when I, I was done when he married uh, Kim. I was like, oh, it's going all downhill from here. It was done. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 but listen, thing, yay, I mean, I'm one day, 
I'll like him again, just not right now. Never. I think I, I, he, I, I, I don't. But we he are has hitting the, the ninety minute mark. Yeah. So he's a great. Yes, he does. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh oh, you want me to just look at? Yeah, you you take it. Yeah, pass uh, it off. No, to he can leave. <laughs> he can Jesus walk himself right out the goddamn door. <laughs> <laughs> he literally made that song for his future. Like. Right. Wow. Uh-oh. God, show me the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Sometimes that's how it goes down here. Hey, you know, hey, BD hey, was... gotta do what you gotta do. Right. But, but yo, BD, Kanye had his best catalog. BD trying though. to tell us something, yo. BD trying to tell us something. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. <laughs> I'm catching up. I know. Uh, but I was going to ask you, like, what is your stance on his catalog? Because I feel like he has the greatest catalog of a hip hop artist. Even if you can't, um, you, don't stand, you can't stand him. He's in my top ten, catalog wise. Okay. Okay. He's in my top ten. I can't, I, I can't, I can't deny, I can't deny his work. But there are still plenty above him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, who I, got I, in a versus battle? Yay or Jay Z? Like you mean, me? like you mean <laughs> for hit for hit? Twenty for twenty, yeah. Yo, for me, I'm picking Jay. Like Jay-Z. I don't know why I'm picking Jay. I just can't. It's not even because of Jay. Like I, it's it's everything with Jay. Like yeah, I don't think I don't think Jay can get him. I don't think, think Jay it, can it, get him? It, I don't think so. I mean, I think it would real. go the distance, but. Oh yeah. Okay. It'd be, it'd be close. It'd be one of those that it'd be real close. But look, don't go, don't r- go by me because I rooted for Soldier Boy against Bow Wow in their in their battle. And, what? I, and then I then I told I asked what? myself I asked myself why. I asked myself why. And I was like, oh Think yeah. it, think. Yeah, I didn't think I didn't think. So you know look, don't take it from me. Me and, <laughs> and Bow Wow the same age. So I knew Bow Wow was really? about to smash. Yes. I, I, just ate I think me and Bow Wow are the same age as well. <laughs> like I grew up like rapping all because I, you know, like every other creator, I used to be a rapper back in the day. Okay, I and see so you. I grew up listening to Bow Wow and like rocking with Bow Wow. That's why when they were like, "Well, Bow Wow ain't got hits," and they were like, "I was like, y'all can't." No, Bow Wow got hit. Catalog, he got hits. Now. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. but. Oh no, he's older than me. Yeah, Bow Wow's older than me. Yeah, he was my yeah, first yeah. concert. So I was like, how the hell did I pick Bow Wow or pick Soldier Boy over Bow Wow when, like, I definitely had all his albums? <laughs> he brought, like, I about to say, I drop was a hit. Right. <laughs> I knew that Soldier Boy had two hit songs in my in my brain, and that was about it. Two. Soldier Boy and turn my swag on. That's all. That's oh, all yeah. I remember. Turn my swag on. I forgot all about that one. So, yeah. It's just because I was in college, right? Like Bow Wow died for me in high school. So my first year of college, I was listening to Booty Meat. I was listening to uh, <laughs> throw some D's on my report card. Like yeah. you know, I was listening to. This. I was like, yo, what? What, what happened to my- him? <laughs> A rich boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw some D's you know, on the bit. He has yeah, and then Soldier Boy movie. did a remix. Though, just got my report card. Throw some yep. D's on it. So See, corny. So Soldier Boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, we talk. We get. We talk about some of these older artists that kind of came and went. Man, we had a lot of great artists that, that kind of just blew up and then <laughs> just, uh, just flamed, checked. They flamed just checked out. out. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. But, Listen, one day, one day, if I if we eat our vitamins and say our prayers, Andre through thousand will come out of the shadow again. Let that no. man rest. No. Let that man be. You want to know why he ain't gonna do it? Because he will prove that he's not as great a rapper as everybody thinks he is. That's why he's not gonna do it. I, and I stand on that. Unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. Not, I, mean, oh. I don't have an opinion, but I know that other people will be like, well, And I love Outcast. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, I think that he, he did. Well, the, he did the Love Below, and that was a great album. Amazing body of work, Love Below. But he he can't do another album because it has to be to that expectation or to the expectation of like all the other Outcast albums. <clears throat> and he can't do it. I don't believe he can do it. 
and I and that's why he ain't put no album out right <laughs> He just want to live his life. He I know he was and run around in the street, you know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 he was in Philly on random street corners playing the flute. Yeah, doing in between thing. in between in between filming a show. And I don't know what <laughs> artists we have nowadays, especially in hip hop. I don't I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. not saying there aren't who can just keep making music and they do consistently like at the level that they always do without disappointing their fans. So they don't overly wow their fans. Even like they just coast. Yeah. Like I feel like Big Sean used to just coast. Like he's uh, like I don't. I'm not a huge just like Big Sean fan, but he just like consistently. Besides when he was not had number one hits. After that, yeah. he just consistently stayed at one level. So every time he drops something, his fans are just okay with what he drops. You know what I mean? Especially um, when he was yeah. doing those pieces with Calvin Harris. Yeah. I but think that, I, that like the person, person? Nipsey, Nipsey. Oh, go ahead. What you guy. say? I said I think Nipsey was that guy that was consistently just putting out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it wasn't too were, high. It wasn't too low. Exactly. It was just yeah. But someone who's really high, who I feel like is really disappointing now and just doesn't even try, I feel like is Drake. Oh, I gave up on Drake after nothing was the same. He just like I feel like he has such potential, but he just doesn't push it anymore. He just knows that anything he releases will be a hit, and he does not push it. I'm currently kind of creeped out by Drake, so... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I've, I've heard some things. Yeah. Him. I've heard some things. I've been. But, you know, I took that, you know, bringing it all full circle, because, <laughs> like I said, I used to um, rap, and I used to... And that's kind of how I got into the, the writing space anyway, bringing it all full circle back to, you know, while we're here. <laughs> but mm-hmm. that same energy I used to put into the music... I put into the books and that and that kind of led us to concept moon and, and and starting the whole project there i think that as a creative if you can create in one space it's, it's not very hard to transition to another space that like is close you know and that's mm-hmm. kind of what i did with mine i i was a big uh, rapper like i said rap i did poetry i used to do spoken word poetry and poetry slams and then i just kind of took all of that in funneled it into like okay i'm gonna tell i want to tell a, a story mm-hmm. and and that's kind of how i got where i am now and i i really feel like the creative process in general is just a beautiful film like it's nothing like just getting your idea out even if it's trash no you know really like mm-hmm. like seriously <laughs> are you like on the east coast still or <laughs> i'm actually i'm actually in the middle east right now oh that's amazing you're in dubai Close. 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 But that's awesome. undisclosed location number one. Undis- exactly. <laughs> no, I was asking. I was thinking like if that was my guess. Coast, like if you were on the East Coast and the way that you brought everything full circle, which is like extremely correct. Like, to me, it's correct. Like I, I've experienced that full circle, and I think a lot of people in this space have. But like we're in Philly, and we're based in Philly, most of us, and. Philly to me is that kind of city. Like yeah. the people out here who are in the sp- like the comic book realm also do poetry. They also do music. If you yeah. go to those events here in Philly, you'll mm-hmm. be doing spoken word at a black owned comic book store. Yeah, you know what dope. I mean? Like that's yeah. what it feels like here. Uh people in our community would it would be like a fangirl fanboy fan binary for right. peoples out there um that you would that you would experience because you're you're all of what we are out here in philly like the blurred community yeah which i, yeah. I love the few times i've been to philly i think i really wasn't in the city long enough to really like get to know the city you know i went up mm. there and i helped somebody move I, like i drove up packed them up and drove back like you know what i mean so mm-hmm. it was kind of like but the, the people that I, when I was out there, I, I don't know if y'all call it the corner. Y'all, y'all don't got bodegas. It's like a little corner store I was out there. Oh, you know? Sure. They're the bodegas. Yeah, yeah. They're corner stores, literally corner stores. So I'm out there and I'm talking. We just call them just, poppy you know, stores. Yeah, we call them okay, poppy stores. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm out there at the poppy store and I'm out and I'm, I'm chopping it up with some cat. Like just kind of, you know, and it was, everybody was really cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it was really different. It was, it was different from what I thought it would be. Like, because growing up down south, and only really knowing about Philly through like rap music, really, 
I'm thinking I'm going to run into a bunch of <laughs> bearded up cats, like freeways. I thought there was freeways everywhere. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was looking for, for – for a small window of time in Philly, that that is that what it is looked what like. It yes. Yeah. It, so. <laughs> but like, it's so interesting. If ever you're in like, Philly or nearby, please let us introduce you to the culture and show oh. you a good mm-hmm. safe time. Next time I'm in the city, I'm coming. I'm coming. It'll be fun. First thing. Yes, yeah, yeah, we will absolutely. take care right. of you. At least I'll I'll take care of you. I don't know about Corey or Deep because they. They ain't got the connects. Like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Damn. I'm coming out there. Um, I like, we got to make it. We got to plan something. Then I'll come out there. I'll bring the team. We'll all come out there and have a good time. Concept yes. moon coming to Philly. Yes. Awesome sauce. Like, we need to get so. you featured at like one of the big conventions or something. Like, look, I love making stuff oh. happen because you know me. Hey. I'm just you always say, hey, set it up. I'm there. Let me know where I need to be at. Like, all I right, like, I, I like that. So, but yeah, no, Philly, like, but yeah, coming from like a small town, like going to the city, like, because you you know so much about the city before you get there, or you think you know, you know what I'm saying? And then mm. you get there, and it'd be like, that is not how this shit is supposed Mm-mm. to be. So, I'm like, I really, like, I really like connecting with people that are actually from those places, and yeah, so that'd be dope. Yeah, we got you. Cool. Hey. Well, it's been a, it has really been an absolute pleasure. This yes. has been fun. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely, man. This yeah. is great. I, I wasn't sure what to expect because, you know, I hadn't seen the show before. Pete saw the show and he was like, yo, I think you would be great on here. And I was like, okay, uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, now this has been absolutely great. I'm I'm going to be tuned in from now on, I promise. Yeah. And uh, we will definitely promote you guys on our website. And hopefully, you know what I'm saying? We want to thank BD for coming in today, and of course, we want to let let all the good people out there know where they can find you and where they can find Concept Moon Studios online. That is us. Oh, you got conceptmoon.com first and foremost. You got uh, you can, on Twitter, on Instagram at Concept Moon. That's it. Everything at Concept Moon. Uh, con- uh, Concept Moon Studios on Facebook. Um, and then you can find me personally on IG at Bigger Than Everybody Bobby. And I know that's right. I like that name. <laughs> and then on Twitter, I'm just BD underscore Diddley. That's it. Um, so, uh, and make sure you go check out the After Image number one Kickstarter. We got packages for everybody, no matter your budget, from five dollars to more. If you want a big package, we got those too. We got everything you need. Hoodies, t-shirts, you know it's about to get cold outside. So yes. make sure you um get your hoodie game right. <laughs> um yeah, we're uh s- send us the link. We're gonna attach that. Uh we're gonna attach that here, especially for our folks over on YouTube. Okay. Yes, okay. it's and they're almost to their Kickstarter goal, guys. Yes. So let's really support them. Like they're they're great and I think like I'm going like tonight when we get off of here, like I'm definitely <laughs> going to pledge because I'm like, yo. You're almost there. I want to see this project be everything that you want it to be. So, yes, thank guys. You, thank you. And stretch goals right. are coming soon. So we're going to have some nice surprises for you once we hit our goals and we're going to do our stretch goals. Um, one of the big things we're doing, I can tell you now, for every pledge that we get, we're donating coloring books and comic books to the Boys and Girls Club in Chicago. Yes. Um, hey. Well, yes. we, we try to we try to do some kind of thing like that every time we go. We try to find a different cause to support every time we go. So it's not just about us; it's about helping these, these young kids and helping the next generation. Um, and so we got, and if we once we get to our stretch goal of four thousand dollars, we're going to donate an additional five hundred dollars to the Boys and Girls Club in Chicago. So that's yeah. going to be our that's our goal right now, and uh, we have more it. to come. And we just want to do what we can to support you guys as you guys support us. And we appreciate you. Yes. All right. Yes. Awesome. Great guys. Well, uh, again, we were here with BD of Concept Moon. This is the Amerimi Junkies. Want to thank you guys for listening in today. Uh, and of course, make sure you check out Amerimi Junkies wherever you're listening to your podcast. Make sure you download it and let us know what you think. And of course, for our YouTubers, please thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
Okay. Of course, we've always got things going on at AmeriMeWire.com. And look out soon. Our next issue of AmeriMeWire magazine will be hitting your digital your digital magazine store soon. Can we talk about uh, the award that, that was... That's not word. yet. Okay. okay. Not, not yet. But okay. I like I like I like where you're at. <laughs> I like, I like yeah. uh, but uh well, we are the Ameribe junkies. Where they can follow you, Corey, for all the geek news. Of course you can always join the Demon Army for uh Demon Engine. You can check him out on Twitch. And of course you can check me out on there as well under Salty Live two one five. But more importantly, make sure you check out Amerime Media. That's A M E R I M E M E D I A. That is across Twitter, IG, and Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> yes. 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 Sorry. I love guys. Look at look at him. Look at him love. flexing. Look look at the sky. I'm yeah. love everywhere online. You can find me. I also work for Metro Esports, so make sure you follow Metro Esports because when you follow them, you support me. Okay. So hey. yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, one more time for oh, BD for from Concept Moon yeah. Studios. Yes. For Concept oh, Moon Studios, I want to give him a round of applause. Oh, He's been a real guys. trooper today. We had a lot Thank of good. You. We had a lot of fun here. Great guest. <laughs> yes. And, oh, yeah, and I'm of back course, and y'all want me back. Yes. Sure. And of course, always a shout out to our our part our partner down in the Panhandle, Queen Deke. Make sure you check out her stores, SerpentineFire.co. That's Serpentine Fire. <laughs> we are the Miami Junkies. Please take care of yourselves and each other. Be well. Bye. Hi, everybody. This is Corey Salter True Floyd for Miami Media, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to check out our other videos right over here. You have a good one. See you around.